All right, we want to welcome the 1,315 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Yeah, just right past that 1,300 mark. Uh, use the video and have a discussion and then use the invitation to receive Christ. That's how easy it is to open a house church uh, using the video that you're watching. Some of you will get saved this week and start inviting people over to your home by next week. Amen? Amen. Amen. And just say, hey, I got saved watching this video and uh, watch the Lord work in your home or their homes. Put the heart emoji on our Facebook page if you are opening a house church or you already have so we can be praying for you. So 1,315 people have sent heart emojis to us and we're we're praying for all y'all. Amen? Amen? That's how they say it in Oklahoma. Amen. All y'all. Maybe Arkansas too. <laughs> so we can be praying for you. So we got a bunch of praise reports. That's what we do on Saturday. All the hard work happens Sunday through Friday. This is just where we come and rock out. Amen? Amen. And uh, so praise report this week, Friday market, still going, still ministering to people. Uh, Sunday door to door, awesome. I, I think we wound up in Sprague River uh, last Sunday, about 15 homes, God directed Sam, and it was just powerful. Um, if you guys don't know it, in the last couple of weeks on Sundays, we've been going house to house ministering to widows, uh, widows that don't have the ability to take care of their properties or their homes, and this is just a whole new ministry now that God has opened up to us. And um, I think that's just gonna go on and on as well. There's a lot of people, men and women, uh, that are widows, that it's hard for them to clean up their yards. Chilliquin has a lot of like two acre properties. So it's not like a little <clears throat> bit of lawn when somebody needs help. Um, you're gonna have to have two or three men getting in there and doing it. So it's amazing how much ministry now we're doing on Sunday, the churches are praying, God move, God bring them in here. And Jesus is telling us on Sunday, well, why don't you go out there and help them? Amen. And so he's opening the doors for that. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Um, we had two new house churches just this week open in Klamath Falls. Mm -hmm. So two new house churches. Let's give the Lord a clap. <laughs> so two new house churches opened in Klamath Falls this week. We have house churches now Sunday through Friday. So we even have house churches now that meet on Sunday, uh, go all the way through to Friday. And always remember, there's, there's a house church here on Wednesday nights. So it's kind of centrally located. You can come back here, same location. It's out in the foyer out front. And then just get to know us and we'll tell you about the other many house churches that are everywhere. Amen? Amen. So, um, so locally, we're ministering seven days a week. Um, on the internet, it's 24-7 ministry internationally through Facebook and YouTube. We want to be praying. Uh, we have multiple house churches in Morocco. Uh, we have a lot of house churches in Morocco, and they just had a very large earthquake. So we just want the Moroccans to know we're praying for you and, um, and just safety and, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot going on around this planet and uh, some of the, our house churches' homes were affected. You gotta be very comfortable, you be very careful in the last days to not get comfortable because something could come shake your house up yeah. in the physical yeah. and in the spiritual realm, amen? amen. So we gotta take it one day at a time. This was pretty powerful. I was working on my new book last night and uh, Missy said, Randy, a gentleman from the Middle East contacted us and this was on Thursday. Listen to this. This gentleman contacted us from the Middle East. He sent last Saturday's service to 1,700 people. One guy in the Middle East watched this service from last Saturday he sent it to 1,700 people, and he wanted to let us know that. Mm -hmm. awesome. And um, so when you're sitting in this room, 
well, mm -hmm. there's a lot more than well going on yeah. <laughs> when this camera clicks on. Amen? Amen. So we want to be praying for him. He also opened a house church as well. Uh, sent it to 1,700 people through his internet page. One person reaching 1,700 people used last Saturday night's message. And Jesus gets all the glory. Thank you for your prayers. Um, Thursday night I was writing again. Um, I've written 115 pages now in the new book, uh, Chilliquin, Oregon Revival. Now what's interesting when God's having you write a book called Chilliquin, Oregon Revival, we see a lot going on right now through our ministry, but what that shows me is something's coming. Because if he's having me write this book, I can tell it's for people that are coming in the future. He's just getting the book ready now. So thanks for your prayers. I've written 115 pages. And um, so I'm sitting there, you know, I get done writing and the Lord goes, oh, by the way, Randy, after you get this book done, which is book 15, he goes, I want you to start writing book 16. Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, did you hit your head or something up there <laughs> on your throne? I, I mean, I'm not even done writing the book that I'm writing. And he goes, oh, I need you to write another book immediately. Well, what's the name of that book? Book 16 is Do You Need Prayer? Oh, yeah. Do You Need Prayer? And I can tell this is going to be a great book for you guys to hand out. Yes. And I think if the Lord tarries till next year, when we do the Friday market booth again, we're going to put a big, huge banner up on that booth that says, do you need prayer? Yeah. Yeah. So this year, God wanted us to hand out over 200 books. But by next year, we'll already have that do you need prayer book written and it'll have all kinds of good stuff about prayer. Amen. Amen. But I can already tell before I'm even started writing it, the foundation of it will be Jesus is making intercession for you. A lot of people don't realize that the Lord prays for you every single day. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And if you can drop that into your mind, wow, the Lord's praying for me today. Mm -hmm. It'll put a little giddy up in your step. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. So anyways, yeah. I'll, when I'm done with this one, I'll start writing that one, I guess. Mm -hmm. Missy's going to have a big pile of tablets to edit. And... Uh, <laughs> So once I'm done writing, don't be asking me when it's done. Be asking her because she'll be editing it. Amen? Amen. There's an urgency in the spirit realm. There's an urgency of God's telling me to write a book. And he's already putting a, another book title in my mind. Mm -hmm. Man. Mm -hmm. That means something good is coming. I wrote here in my notes, don't be left behind. Allow Jesus to use your life right now. I think we've milked that rapture cow dry. And I completely, I, I have no problem believing in the rapture, but now it's escapism <laughs> theology. Well, we're, we're going to fly away, we're going to escape. I have no problem with that. But you better be working your butt off right now. You better be daily putting in your time. Well, Randy, I don't like when you say butt off. Well, it, it caused a reaction, didn't it? Yeah. See, we're so focused on the rapture, which there's guys called to do that. But my Bible says the Lord better find us working when he shows up. Mm -hmm. So my job is to empower you to reach out, to disciple and send out. Amen? Amen. So don't be left behind. I'm talking about don't be left behind the move of God. Because you'll take a month off, you'll take six walks off, and then you'll walk back into church and go, wow, what happened in this place? Well, God's been moving. Amen? Amen. So don't be left behind. Allow Jesus to use your life right now. Now. Amen? Amen. So tonight we're going to talk about supernatural encounters. 
Supernatural Encounters. So if you have your Bible with you, um, we're going to be starting in the Old Testament tonight. We're going to go to Exodus chapter 3. All over the world, people are encountering the nail-scarred man. People are having this individual that are non-Christian show up in their homes and he has holes in his wrists and feet. They call him the nail-scarred man. Amen. And then he says, I'm Jesus. Powerful, powerful stuff. Amen. So we're going to be in the Old Testament. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 3. And uh, it's the second book in the Bible. So you got Genesis, Exodus. And uh, whoo, my brain's on overload. When the Lord starts having you, you're going to write multiple books. I've already written four books, I think, since we've been in Chilliquin. So Chilliquin's Bookville, man. Awesome. So supernatural encounters. So let's take a look at the word supernatural. You know, that's thrown around a lot. But the definition of supernatural is an event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding. Um, I was listening to a missionary one time and he prayed over a little boy in Africa that had no eyes. So there's people that are born and the skin is actually over their eye socket. There's, there's no eyelid or anything. It's not exposed. It's just they're born um, with just skin over an empty socket. So he prayed and, and nothing happened. So he thought, well, Lord, I prayed. So the next morning about daylight, he's staying in this little village. And all of a sudden he hears all this screaming. And he, he, he goes and he's in a building that's got a second story in it. And he looks down and here's hundreds of people in this African area community just screaming and yelling and screaming. And yelling. He thought somebody had died. So he comes out and the crowd's just mobbing him and they bring the little boy to him. And he has brand new eyes. Amen. He has brand new eyelids. Wow. Amen. I'm going to let you, let awesome. you chaw on that a little bit. Yeah. See, we get so wrapped up. My house, my car broke down. This doesn't work. That doesn't work. My body doesn't work. See, you've got to start taking in some supernatural. You've got to start listening to stories like that. And revival broke out in all of those villages because here's a little boy born without eyes. I was blind and now I can see. I've listened to missionaries where people are born without a hand. And in the deepest, darkest jungles of where there's nobody, a prayer comes and a hand grows back. That's right. yeah. And we think, why doesn't that happen here, Randy? Because we're not hungry. That's right. That's right. We're not desperate. Mm -hmm. We flip on the big screen, right. sit there for hours, we get on the old computer. <laughs> Amen. Like a trained monkey. <laughs> Amen. Oh, don't shout me down while I'm preaching. <laughs> now you'll spend hours staring into a box. And then Randy talks about a hand growing back and an eye growing back. You can't fathom that because we live in a lukewarm nation. Right. 
We live in a nation, uh, I'm not going to make it to church. Uh, we're not going to have house church tonight. Uh, you know, I kind of sprained my little toe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But when you're in the deepest, darkest parts of the Amazon, and you walk in there, not with a big mouth, but in the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit, and someone's hand grows back. Yeah. This is not in my notes. <laughs> this is called freestyle preaching. Amen, I love it. Supernatural. Supernatural is an event attributed to some force beyond scientific understanding. Well, I want to understand everything that you're saying, Rand. Sorry, ain't going to happen. You are never going to put my God in a box. You're never going to put Jesus in a box. I don't need to explain anything to you. You let the word explain it to you. Because you're always going to get mad at me. Because it's the delivery. I, I just don't like that. Well, go start your own church. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So encounter. So we just talked about supernatural. An encounter is an unexpected experience. Listen to another missionary. It's about 18 hours, John, to get to this place where he was supposed to preach. John spent a lot of time ministering in Africa. So he travels 18 hours by car to get to a village, and it's 125 degrees. So the next time you're bawling and squalling and whining and moaning about how bad you got it, Take a time out. Mm -hmm. Go get in the corner. Put your nose in the corner. Rand, you're treating us like little kids. You, you act like that. Yep. Yep. Like we're spoiled. Yeah. We are. So he drives and he gets there. And there's hundreds of people in the middle of this village crying and weeping. So he doesn't even get out of the car they pick him up and carry him above their heads. Men of God's here! Men of God's here! Men of God's here! And he's going, oh my goodness. He had never been carried at the top of large men's hands to a service. Remember what I said about hungry and desperate? Well, guess what? Their chief had been dead for three days. And they left him laying in that 125 degree sun. They didn't cover him. They didn't anything. I listened to this story in person. I listened to this story in person with the missionary talking. And they said, they set me down right by this man that had been dead for three days. He said his mouth was full of flies. Just hundreds of flies. Just right. men of God's here. Men of God's here. Man of God, raise the dead. <laughs> so your little patty cake Christianity hmm. might not work there. And the missionary says, either you got it or you don't. Right. Yep. So he said, he laid hands on the chief. Hundreds and hundreds of people, just a small little amount of space, six feet. Everything else is hundreds of people. And he said, all of a sudden, that chief 
let out a big old <coughs> and hundreds of flies came out of his lungs, out of his mouth, and that missionary said hundreds of people took off in every <laughs> He said not one person was still standing there. He said, man, they were out of there like a covey of quail. <laughs> see, you think you want to see the supernatural. You think you want to see something like that. But guess what? When he coughed, that was unexpected. And he stood up and he said, I was in a complete dark place with no light. He said, no light. And he said, I could hear you praying in the distance. Talking to the missionary. And he said, as soon as I hear that prayer, there was a light. And he goes, I started moving back towards the light. Amen. We haven't even got to the first scripture yet. I am <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Hundreds of people in the Klamath Basin are going to have an unexpected encounter with Jesus Amen. that will change the course of their life. There will be a ripple effect touching the world and the epicenter will be Chilliquin. How can you say that with so much confidence, right? It's already happening. That's right. Every single Saturday. And then we put this on. We have house churches everywhere. This church ministers Friday. It ministers on Sundays. You guys minister all week long. You outdo a church that's a thousand people. I know because I've been on staff at churches of 1,500 people. I know I've been on staff at a church of 750. I know what that looks like. The paid people do all the work. You guys are awesome. Amen. Church is just fun. January, we've been coming out here four years. I'm out here on my day off. <laughs> Three and a half years. Well, Randy, you need to rest. You can rest when you're dead. Oh, I got to rest. I'm tired. Why are you tired? Ask me, tell me, why are you tired? It's not a criticism. But you need to think how you're using your time and what you're listening to. Is what you're listening to elevating you? Or is what you're listening to pulling you down? Mm -hmm. Exodus 3, 1 through 14. Let's take a look in the Bible at an encounter. Now Moses, Exodus 3, 1, we're going to go through verse 14. Now Moses was tending flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to a far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Remember, God will usually encounter you in your desert. Yes. Yes. That doesn't mean he won't encounter you when you're rocking for him. But some of you have been in a hard place and you missed your encounter. You missed your encounter because you magnified the mountain, your problem, instead of telling your problem how big God is. So let's see if Moses gets his encounter. Verse 2. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, some of you need to start thinking about what God is wanting you to do. Some of you have had crossroads in your life. And Moses thought, you thought, and instead of going to see what God was showing you, you went the other direction. Many of you tonight here 
America, around the world, God is getting ready to encounter you and you better go check it out. I'm not angry tonight. I'm actually very happy. But I'm not here to make you happy. You didn't hire me. You can't fire me. I was called to kick your chair. You make me happy. I don't care what you say. All right. So Moses. Now let me tell you something about Jackie. She's all happy and loves Randy now. But the first few weeks. Oh, no, 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 no. She goes, I don't like this man. I don't like anything about him. Amen. All right. But guess what? She stayed. Yes. And she realized I wasn't trying to injure her. I was trying to build her. Amen. That's right. Now I grew up all my life farming, welding, grinding, fixing equipment, taking balers apart, taking M farmalls apart. And guess what? A lot of times before you weld something that's fractured, you got to grind on it a little yeah, bit. You do. Yeah, you do. You got to clean that surface and you got to prep it. Some of you are going to come here on Saturdays and you're going to get grinded on. And you're going to have to make a decision. Do I want my crack fixed in my frame? Because you're going to get ground on and then guess what? We're going to pull out some hot metal to put down in that frack. Mike knows what I'm talking about. See, Jesus taught in parables. Well, you're talking about welding, boy. It's a parable. That's right. Now, I grew up learning how to weld with a stick welder. Now you got MIG, TIG, all kinds of stuff. But boy, when you first hit that with that welder, all right, enough welding lesson back to Moses. Hey, Mo! Oh, Mo wasn't one of the three students, I'm sorry. <laughs> Verse 3, so Moses thought, I'll go over, see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, see, God is waiting to see if you're going to come over. Yeah. See, this is 202 people have signed in this Lamb's Book of Life. Hours and hours of teaching. But guess what? Only 2% will make it back. They got excited, they got saved, but now God is saying, it's more than just that. You've got to have an encounter with me. Maybe multiple times in your life. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Many of you need to start saying, here I am. I am. Here I am. And I believe that, Jackie. I'm not saying that you're not, but about 13,000 people will watch this message this week. So always remember, you're here, but thousands are out there. So I'm, I'm looking at Sean, but she doesn't need to get all wound up and crazy. He looked at me and said that. I'm offended. Calm down, child. <laughs> so easy to get offended, right, Sean? Take a chill pill, man. Randy looks and talks at everybody. Verse 5, do not come any closer, God said. Take your sandals off. To have an encounter of God is going to cost you taking something off. That's right. Something that you're packing around that's hindering you from entering into an encounter. Amen. You're going to have to lose it. Every single one of you have some kind of baggage that tries to get back on you. Amen. 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 Now you say, I didn't say it's on you, but it tries to come back. You're standing on holy ground. 
Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. See, Jesus ripped that veil. We have access to God now. But many of you, when God starts speaking to you, you look away. You're afraid. Lord, I don't want to play at that level. I don't want to get that crazy for you. Well, you better get crazy for him. Crazy in love. Verse 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of the people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into the good and spacious land, the land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Verse 10. So now I am sending you. Oh my, my. Ken, God is expecting me to go minister to people that are in slavery to sin? Send Randy. He likes it. No, Randy's going to kick your chair until you like it. All right. It's very, very quiet in here. But you know what? There will be house churches all over the world just praising God for preaching like this. I love this little guy from Egypt sent us a photo of his house. He was so excited that he had opened a house church. And I would say this house was probably maybe 10 feet by 15 feet dirt floor and probably similar uh, bricks that the Jews made for the Egyptians. No bathroom, no running water, no door on his house. You could see the people walking by, no door. And here's this little Egyptian man. I opened a house church today. This is my house church. See, it even choked Sean up. You gotta run, man. You gotta run. Choked her up. So, really choked her up. Verse 10. So now, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Be very careful, Mike, when we tell God that we're not qualified. Be very careful when you start making excuses why you suck your thumb when he needs you to do something. Amen. God doesn't call the qualified he qualifies the call. That's right. You'll get that in a couple of weeks. Just let it soak in. <laughs> and God said, I will be with you, verse 12, and this will be the sign that is that I who have sent you, when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and they say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Look at Moses, man, just sitting there, just constantly agitating God. Dude, you have God speaking to you. But what do we do? The same thing. So verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me. Encounter number one. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Acts 9. 
9-1. We're going to reread a little bit of last week's message to kind of dovetail it together. Randy, you just talk so loud. I know. I know. I know. If I could bottle what was inside of me, I don't know what it happened. Acts 9, 1 through 19. So this is what we were talking about last week. If you didn't see the message, you can watch it online. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So here's Saul, who would later become Paul. He had just witnessed uh, Stephen being stoned to death, and he actually was excited about it. He goes, finally, somebody took that bum out. And God goes, really, Saul? That's your perspective about me. And he told Satan, I think I'm going to use this guy for my glory. So any people you see running around this basin that are just shooting at people by the post office, mm-hmm. <clears throat> pray for them. Yeah. Pray for them. Now he probably won't get out of prison for a long time. But what if we would have reached him before that? Because there's 10 more guys like that in these houses. Yeah. Amen. Let's see if we can reach them before. Amen. 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 Verse 3. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I love this uh, Question, who are you, Lord? Man, you know, sometimes God has to knock you down before you can call him Lord. Some of you are so hard-headed, you just don't stay in church, you just don't stay in house church, you got to run back into the world. So don't whine and moan when your life goes down the toilet. Don't bawl and squall when you have no peace. What do you expect how the enemy is going to treat you? He's going to treat you like a dog. I know that one. Verse 5. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Many of you aren't listening to what you're being told to do. You don't want to listen. Randy, I don't like this. That's because it's coming up against something in you that's grinding on you. It's called your free will. The Bible challenges your free will. It throws your little agenda right out the window. Saul had an agenda, but Herant, God had a different name for him. God will whack you so hard, you won't even be called the same person after he gets done with you. (laughs) People go, Randy Hadwick is a minister? I don't think so. (laughs) I do not think so. I know Randy Hadwick. I went to school with Randy. Randy Hadwick is not a minister. They'll say the same thing about some of you. I am Jesus whom you are, verse 6. Now get up and go into the city. Verse 7, the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. 
So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat. I challenge some of you to not eat for three days and not watch TV for three days. Some people are trying to do that. That's awesome. That's awesome. I guarantee you, you don't eat for three days and drink water. God will have your undivided attention. Now, I know some of you take medicines and different things like that. I'm not saying it jeopardize your health. But get serious. Turn something off so you can hear the Lord. Hmm. Verse 10, in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Now, some of you might be the Ananias in this story. God's going to speak to you. And he's getting ready to send a Saul to you. Well, I don't want a Saul. I want a G.I. Joe with a Kung Fu grip for Christmas. Not a Saul. You got to put a little humor in there. Jackie did not see any humor in that. She just went right to, well, this bless God, this is what I want. And that's okay. That's okay. Yes, Lord, he answered. Ananias goes, yes, Lord. The Lord told Ananias, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. Isn't it awesome when God literally sends you to Straight Street? <laughs> Some of you need to go to Straight Street. Remember, I'm looking at you a lot of people on here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't take it personal. <laughs> Go to the house on, of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man uh, from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his... Oh, my goodness. Ananias is kicking and screaming, bawling and squalling. <laughs> Saul's a baby. They just wiped his butt and slapped the diaper on him. He walked around, goo goo ga ga, goo goo ga ga. Uh, the guy just got saved. He just surrendered. He's already having a vision of Ananias. Goo goo ga ga, goo goo ga ga. Randy. Are you on drugs? <laughs> Wait till you get to heaven. No. I, I, just, I just take gospels. That's right. <coughs> In a vision. See, I'm just a little old farm boy. I'm just a simple, simple person. But Mike, when I read this stuff, I just see it like simple. This guy just got knocked down. He's blind. He's already praying. And now he sees a vision of a man named Ananias that's going to come pray for him. This is some awesome stuff. Verse 13, Lord Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and he's a bad dude. That's in the ghetto translation. <laughs> All the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. Verse 14, and he comes here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on the name of the Lord. And guess what? That includes Ananias. Ananias, he's going, I don't want to go to Straight Street to Judah's house. Because God, what if you're wrong? Yeah. You see the battle going on? I could get arrested. But the Lord said to Ananias, see, sometimes the Lord's going to talk to you again because you deaf. You deaf, you're not listening. That's offensive, right? How many of us can say, I've been deaf before? I wasn't listening, right? If Sam, he giggles the whole time I preach. Sam just giggles. Softly. That was me. <laughs> no, I know. But if Sam is giggling while I'm preaching, it's good, man. It's good. It's good. And you know he rubs his head a lot, too. Yeah. He, rubs, 
<laughs> well, I'm preaching, <laughs> man. Yeah. He's rubbing his head all the time. That was me. Now, if he starts rubbing his head and rubbing his belly at the same time, I'm hungry. That's hungry. All right, let's get back on track. Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. What? Goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga. Uh, I gotta suffer? I just got saved, now you're saying suffer? Isn't God fun? Yeah. Verse 17, then Ananias went to the house and entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that I may see, so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately. Isn't it ironic that Saul is having a vision and specific names and the Holy Spirit's not even in him yet? He just has a knowledge of the Lord. That Leonard, the, the Bible scholars that meet in the house churches, I'll let them figure that one out. Amen? Because it's above my pay grade. Not really. I'm just going to let you guys fight each other over it. Verse 18. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. Woo-wee! Man, they did not waste any time with this hot rod. Baptized him. Right now. Well, what about the elder board giving us permission to do that? What if, Mike, what about the eight-week water baptismal class? And then your certification piece of paper that we give you permission to be baptized. Not so good, right? But that's what we do now. You are our trophy. So we're going to run you through our system so we get the credit. I'll let you think about that one too. Immediately, something like scales fall from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. And I think I'm just going to finish there tonight. Look at what Saul did immediately. He got into fellowship with people that were stronger than him. Yeah. He immediately put himself into a situation where he could learn quickly. Mm -hmm. And next week, we're going to take a look at the people that said they loved him, the people that said they were for him. We're going to look at next week. They said, this guy needs to die yesterday. They do that now. And guess what happens to us when we really get sold out sometimes? The mediocre people don't like it. But you need to seek out people that are all in. Because if you hang out with turkeys, you're never going to soar with eagles. If you hang out with gossipers, slanders, people with critical spirits, people that are negative, nasty, always being negative about people, it will pull you down. You've got to get strengthened so if God needs you to go around those people, you're strong enough to not get pulled in. Amen? Amen. Amen. So praise God. So we're going to give an altar call right now um, in all the house churches, locally, nationally. Um, Romans 10, 9 says, believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and, and you'll be saved. And so we're going to pray a simple prayer with you um, that you can use in your house churches or use ministering to anybody. You can invite somebody over to watch this service. So let's pray this prayer together. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus 
I believe, I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and, that you died and that you died and paid for my sins. For my sins. Jesus, Jesus, I believe, I believe that, you that you rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into, my heart, into my heart as my Lord, as my Lord and, Savior. and Savior. Jesus, Jesus I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So if you're opening a house church or you already have, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. Use the video. Have a discussion about it. Use the altar call at the end. That, that's how quickly God is moving uh, throughout the earth. We had one gentleman from the Middle East take last week's service and send it to 1,700 people. We didn't do that. He did that, but guess what? If you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, shooting a video in Chilliquin, Oregon, awesome, and putting it on the internet, that guy never gets it. So you're a vital part, your testimony, your witness, and it starts with reaching one. Guess what? We reached one man, and he turned around and reached 1,700. I tell people all the time, reach one. Reach one. You don't have any idea of the multiplication. Amen? Amen? Love you guys. We'll see you next week. Amen?